So I can start. So discussion later. OK, fine. <laughs> uh, I'm Fabrizio Ferrandi. I'm from Politecnico of Milan. Uh, it's a university. This is an uh, open source software developed in uh, our university and together with other people. Uh, so this talk is related to FPGA design. And the idea is actually that FPGA could be very helpful in order to uh, accelerate uh, some specific application, not for general kind of uh, acceleration. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, a nice story about uh, uh, accelerating uh, um, um, critical uh, key application. Here th we have a list of possible acceleration. That uh, acceleration range from uh, 2x to sometimes uh, 100x. Uh, the nice things about FPGA yet is that mm, you have acceleration, but I mean you are able ev even to control the power consumption. So power is not an issue even if you accelerate uh, um, very e uh, evenly. I mean uh, you are sometimes, for example, for Monte Carlo simulation, uh, uh, 800 the faster uh, simulation and uh, uh, 45 more efficient uh, uh, in terms of energy and so on and so forth. So this is the first element of the talk. The second element of the talk is related to how to program these kind of things. I mean, it's not easy, and um, in, in, in the past there are several efforts uh, from handmade design, that is something that uh, currently works even, to not, even now, uh, till some automated kind of things. I mean, uh, in, uh, uh, in the past uh, and currently we have, uh, we have investigated uh, how to automatically translate, for example, a, a behavioral specif uh, specification uh, down to uh, uh, an RTL description. I mean, uh, uh, my limit uh, in these talks will be um, something that could be uh, synthesized by standard RTL tools, like Silinx, uh, um, uh, IC, or uh, uh, Vivado, or Quartus Arter, and so on and so forth. So, uh, but even that kind of thing is not easy. So, uh, in the past, there are several languages that are used as a way to express the behavior. Uh, we moved from, in the past, uh, uh, in the, there was some effort in order to synthesize behavioral VHDL down to RTL VHDL, for example. But that kind of thing does not work since actually you are playing the same game of the hardware designer, providing another language or another extension of the language in order to do the same things that a standard designer usually does. Uh, so recently, uh, the, ki the kind of specification used in order to automate this kind of process have been moved to something of uh, somehow totally different. I mean, instead of using hardware, des hardware description language, uh, recently, we moved to software language, I mean, uh, like C, C++, uh, Java, for example. Uh, there are even, uh, for example, uh, uh, around MIT and uh, some company, there is even some effort in order to uh, do high level synthesis starting, for example, from uh, hardware specific language, like maybe uh, could be uh, Blue Spec. So, but anyway, restricting to uh, a description based on uh, software programming language. In this talk, I mean, we mainly consider C function. The idea is to generate for each of, uh, uh, of the function you have in your description a controller and a data path uh, in hardware. So you have the controller, the elaboration unit described in RTL at the end of the process. Uh, and that description uh, should be a synthesized of a very logo VHDL kind of things. Uh, technology could be, uh, um, usually this kind of things target ASIC or FPGA, but I mean, I think that recently uh, uh, the FPGA target is, seems to be a more available solution to this problem. Uh, as usual, uh, this kind of um, thing seems too easy, but actually uh, designing hardware is not uh, very easy. I mean, you need a, uh, maybe a PhD or somehow a very high skill in order to do that kind of things. Maybe you, ha you need such kind of things even for software. But anyway, uh, it seems that exploiting uh, uh, hardware description, uh, sorry, um, software uh, uh, programming language could be a viable solution in order to uh, implement uh, in hardware uh, some key 
uh, kernels, and actually it should be helpful in terms of uh, increasing the productivity of the, uh, of the designer. And that the other kind of things that could be interesting is that actually the idea is to not to uh, actually need all the skills that hardware designer usually need. And you just need to know C and more or less that's it. It's not true, but anyway, that is the, uh, the aim. Uh, so that is uh, actually um, a very uh, nice thing, but what happened at the end, so which is the quality of these kind of tools, uh, is, get, is getting better. That is something that is uh, uh, getting better in, uh, uh, as the uh, time passes. Uh, usually it's worse than uh, handmade uh, RTL design, but I mean, I think it's it even true in software. If you write assembler code, you usually are able to do better than uh, any kind of C uh, or high language, um, uh, high uh, level languages for software programming. Uh, but uh, mm, uh, uh, that is one side of the problem. The other kind of nice thing is that usually it's better than software programming. So if you have a, a microprocessor or microcontroller and you compare the results of the A level synthesis, usually A level synthesis win. So that is nice, uh, another nice thing of the H HLS. Uh, first things about these talks is related to GCC. Why GCC could, uh, um, uh, uh, came, could came in this picture? Uh, GCC is a compiler to start from a C, um, start, uh, it has uh, several front end and it, it supports several language. Um, when we try to uh, perform this kind of process to, to automate the translation from an I-level description to RTL design, we discover actually that there are a lot of things in common with compiler uh, infrastructure. So we start to study GCC in 2004, so this kind of project is uh, 10 years old, and we discover that actually we may exploit more or less the same intermediate representation exploited by GCC, and so we study that kind of representation and we uh, extract such kind of representation because in that, at that level uh, of GCC, so the intermediate one, the middle one, where actually all the uh, intermediate, uh, intermediate transformation are performed, we uh, exploit in such intermediate representation, we may actually exploit all the standard optimization techniques performing in a standard compiler like GCC, even in some ad advanced one, you know, the, in, and that kind of things. So we develop uh, a plugin that extracts such middle um, intermediate representation and serialize it in a, <coughs> in a file. And then we build up over this uh, intermediate representation all the things needed in order to uh, optimize uh, and generate the hardware starting from them. I mean, there is function allocation sharing, uh, memory allocation, uh, in hardware, you need to perform some analysis in order to understand the bit size of the wires and some uh, stuff like that. Module allocation, register allocation, and that kind of things generate a controller and data path. At the end, we have a single tool, a command line tool that is able to uh, start from, okay, start from, <coughs> it's able to start from uh, a C description and generate VHDL of, and, uh, of uh, variable. Uh, this is the list of features. Uh, there is support, more or less, ANSI support, ANSI support is more or less complete. Uh, obviously, a recursive function is not so easy to support. We support uh, uh, more or less uh, GCC from 4.5 to 4.9. Uh, there is a lot of distribution we support from Ubuntu to Fedora. And uh, there is a rich set a component already developed uh, that perform more or less all the basic functionality you may have uh, at lower level uh, uh, internally in GCC from uh, su uh, addition, uh, subtraction, uh, supporting of floating point, uh, whatever you will uh, have in, uh, uh, in this kind of things. All these kind of things are described in, in open source with an XML description that could be easily extendable. Uh, there is a support for verification, automatic generation of test bench. Uh, we exploit two uh, uh, free software projects in order to perform such simulation. In particular, we exploit Icarus, Icarus Verilog and Verilator. And also, uh, we support some commercial tools like ModelSim, uh, iSim, or XSim from uh, Xilinx. 
uh, we have a, a larger regression test, as any compiler should have. Uh, this is uh, a large set taken, taken from academic side and uh, even from GCC. Uh, support for uh, uh, synthesis, uh, uh, more or less the list is uh, almost complete in terms of uh, uh, tools supported, uh, and we are even uh, currently considering even uh, some uh, uh, open source project, in particular there is the OSIS project that could be very nice in order to perform the synthesis more or less till the end. Mm -hmm. We missed uh, the last step, I think, but we are not so far in order to be able to program an FPGA. Uh, some case studies. So, uh, three example. Uh, Ketchak is a crypto core. Um, uh, it was uh, the winner of the SHA-3 competition and performed some times ago. We take the C description and we compare with the VHDL handmade. Uh, developed by the, uh, the winner of the, of the contest. So, uh, I'll usually control the C is more easy than uh, made the when site uh, start to write the VHDL. So that kind of things uh, was passed to Bamboo, uh, the tool uh, we developed. Uh, and we actually are able to obtain a better performance losing some area. I mean, if you look to the uh, lookup table, uh, I mean, it's not so comparable in terms of R, but it, in terms of performance, it's not too bad. Uh, the second example is not uh, is a nice uh, kind of fix that one of my students does, is writing some uh, uh, rectangle or circle in a, on, a, uh, on a VGA screen, just uh, exploiting some uh, C primitive uh, and having uh, integrated that with, uh, um, uh, with a, a, a standard core. Finally, we have even tried to uh, synthesize and see which kind of, uh, of C support we are able to have. And we start from an, an open source project developed at, at, uh, at CERN and uh, we are with other partners. And this is pretty large kind of project, but that kind of project uh, uh, we was able to synthesize and we are able to fit that kind of things in a single uh, zinc uh, uh, board. Uh, that's it. Uh, we are keen to cooperation, integration with other kind of tools, uh, questions, uh, comments, and whatever. Questions? It's very difficult to say so many words in <laughs> 50 minutes, so. No, pointer is not a problem. Sorry. So the question is, one of the problem of, uh, of uh, um, synthesis of uh, program uh, of specification based on, on uh, a C or whatever, is that uh, a C thinks to have a shared memory there. And so you have pointers, arithmetic of pointers, and whatever it is. Uh, we actually are able to deal with that kind of thing since, since we have a model allocation, we use what GCC does in order to figure out which is the size of the Allen and so on and so forth. We have developed some units that are able to support uh, aligned and non-aligned uh, access to the memory, more or less as a, a processor does. So there is a bus where we put the address, the memory re return, the data, and so on and so forth. That kind of things works and works pretty efficiently. So the question is, there is something that uh, uh, maybe I missed, uh, maybe you uh, it could elaborate a little bit more, but the question is related to that there are some incons inconsistencies between the two languages. So there So reversing, so the idea is to reverse engineering the VHDL in C and then uh, actually have something that could be 
retargeted to any kind of uh, hardware and so on and so forth. I, I mean, it's a matter of uh, designer fantasy. I mean, I did such kind of things, for example, for floating point course. So I start sometimes from the HDL description of uh, available of floating point unit and I try to rewrite everything in C. Actually, uh, uh, most of the time uh, you have to deal through bit size, but that kind of things it could be controlled in C through masking and saying that ki that kind of thing is not greater than that and so on and so forth. Compiler are pretty clever in, or in that kind of things since, for example, GCC 4.9 in, uh, start to support value range, and so we just have to add the bit value analysis, and so on and so forth. So actually, I, I mean, I, uh, there are things that could be uh, uh, not easily ported to uh, to C. I'm thinking maybe to uh, when you have co things concurrent and and stuff like that. But I mean, it's another option. I mean, if you are Hardware design, um, as I, 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 uh, I was most of the time, uh, sometimes it, it's better to start in, in, uh, in, uh, in hardware design. But I, I'm trying to do that kind of uh, things that is try to involve people that I does not have all the skill usually you have, uh, uh, an hardware design have in order to build an FPGA, uh, just giving exposing to, to him a tool and and, and see, I mean, that kind of things at the beginning is not uh, optimal, but I mean, it's a trade-off. So the question is about recursive function. Recursive function, it's, there are solution about that. Uh, solution really, mm, are currently are not implemented in the tools. Uh, and solution uh, concern the allocation of a, a memory, and so you have a stack, uh, and actually th during the synthesis you try to mimic what a processor does, building the, uh, the stack and the, uh, and the parameter allocation you usually have with, uh, with a recursion. It's even true that at least till now, I do not see any embedded uh, things or high performance things that could not be translated in an iterative way, uh, GCC, for example, have optimization that automatically trans translate that kind of thing that could be translate from it uh, from a recursive version to a iterative view one. For example, factorial could be an example. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.